Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Really excited about tonight's show. I get to spend the next hour talking about the quantum evolution of consciousness with Dr. Carl Johan Kalman. His new book has released, The Global Mind and the Rise of Civilization, The Quantum Evolution of Consciousness. Very excited to be speaking with him on this. We have so much going on in the world today. As always, it always seems there's something going on, but we are in the United States here approaching a really uh, interesting timing with the elections coming up. We have a lot of stuff happening in this planet. And uh, if you look on the news or even online or even in your own meditation, you can feel that energy. You can feel what's going on to a certain extent. So this is going to be a really timely conversation, and I'm really looking forward to it. I have spoken with Dr. Coleman before on the air, and you can find those archives of our past episodes on my YouTube channel. Dr. Coleman holds a Ph.D. in physical biology from the University of Stockholm. He's a leading expert on the mind calendar, and he is also the author of The Mind Calendar and the Transformation of Consciousness and the Purposeful Universe. He lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I have some great questions for him tonight, and I'm really excited to see what he has to say and how he's going to weigh in on all these things that are happening. We have weather patterns happening, big weather patterns happening. We have social movements happening. Lots of different paradigms that seem to be calling our attention. And so I'm really anxious to see how he sees all of this based on his new release. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Coleman. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, Hillary. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Thanks for coming. Um, so let's just get right into it. How do we, let's start with talking. Could you talk to us a little bit about how our brains receive consciousness from what you call the global mind? Yeah, well, what I found, and, and it's based on studies of, of the Mayan calendar over a long period of time, is that um, the, the minds that we have uh, are not created by our brains. Uh, instead, the, the mind um, is something that we download. Our, our individual brains download a global mind. And this global mind is not static. It undergoes a, a wave form so to speak. And actually, there are nine different waves that at the current time is downloadable by our brains. And what this means is that uh, humanity as a whole and, and we as individuals, how we think about matters um, change uh, as a result of these, the ups and downs of these waveforms. Um, so that, that would be my uh, in, uh, simple, short uh, version of, of how I understand uh, human thinking to occur. Um, but it's also, uh, it, it has wide-ranging uh, consequences um, <clears throat> because that means that uh, human history really then is a product of these kind of waves. And how humans see things, how they think about things, and also the kind of reality, the kind of social reality that they're creating and the kind of technological uh, realities that they are creating actually is something that, that is really very much subject to this kind of a wave plan, if you like. Um, and it's coming, uh, in my view, and, and in the ancient view, many ancient people would say something similar. It, it emanates from the center of the universe. And uh, um, um, uh, so, so what is happening in, in to, you, you mentioned the, the political changes that is happening at this particular point in time. It really is affected very much uh, of changes in, in, in the global mind. Uh, um, and uh, even though most people are, are, are not aware of it, uh, most people would think that uh, their, their own 
way of thinking is a product of their own brains, so to speak. And, and certainly that is the way that uh, it's been taught in schools, and it's sort of the dominating uh, materialist paradigm that, that has been told in, in, um, in biology and medicine and so forth, is the idea that, that our brains create our, our minds. But this is completely different. It's, it's the opposite idea, the, namely that our brains download the mind that comes from the outside, really, and uh, from, from the Earth's mind, you might say, the global mind. Uh, but that, in turn, is really a function of these waves that are coming from the center of the universe and affecting the, 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 uh, the, our, our planet, and then we, in turn, uh, download uh, the the changing uh, ways of, of looking at the world. Now, if I understand you correctly, is there a universal mind and an earth mind, or are they the same thing? Well, um, I would, I, I cannot really uh, uh, answer that. Uh, I, I think there is a um, the, you might talk about a universal mind that uh, emanates from the, from uh, the center of the universe, or what the ancient peoples would talk about as as the cosmic tree of life, and then, uh, but then that uh, center broadcasts these waves, and then uh, when they these waves are received by our planet, then it creates what you might call a global mind. Um, now, really, the question then is if, if there are other planets out there with, with life in, in other solar systems and so forth, is, is the global mind that they are receiving exactly the same as on our planet? I, I would think not. I think it's sort of it's being focused differently, uh, and, and even though there is a common source in a universal mind. Hmm, interesting. Now, how does the Mayan calendar provide a blueprint for these consciousness downloads that you describe have happened throughout history in these waves? Yeah, well, um, it's, um, it's a number of different waves. Um, um, it's sort of an expanded quantum physics that enters a, 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 a frequency range that is not normally studied by physicists. Um, and <clears throat> these waves uh, was what the Maya built their calendar system on. They, they charted the ascending and descending phases of, of these particular uh, waves. And it, they, they had a name for it even. Uh, this wave uh, that they would chart would, would be also be called the plumed serpent, uh, which was a, a, a bringer of civilization in, in the uh, lore of, of um, ancient Mexico, not only the Maya, but also the Aztecs and, and Toltecs and sev several other people, so that there was sort of a, a waveform that they would symbolize with a, with a serpent. But they, they saw that there was a waveform that, that brought civilization. And this is also then, you know, the this is something that historians in general have simply ignored. But then when you start to look at uh, the history uh, of, of human civilization uh, with its ups and downs, its rise and falls, uh, you will find that it actually uh, coincides very well with these waves that the Maya charted and, and which was the basis of their calendar system. And um, the, maybe the most clear-cut example of that would be that um, in, in 3115 B.C., uh, which is about 5,130 years ago, uh, a new wave was activated or received, began to be received by the Earth. And... Uh, what we know, uh, factually speaking, is that that is the time when higher civilizations 
uh, meaning those that have the ability to write and build cities and pyramids and uh, many, many other things. They actually uh, appear on our planet for the first time as this wave is being activated. So when they said that this wave is a bringer of civilization, they, they are actually just telling uh, uh, the truth. And um, uh, the way it worked was that this wave actually brought a, a new mind to humanity. And it was by using this new mind or resonating with this new global mind that uh, people started to, to acquire the tools to create civilizations. And uh, that, you know, the, the, the new mind uh, that this way brought allowed them to start to write, to start to count, start to build uh, immensely uh, sophisticated architecture and and many, many other things. So it's not a, the the rise of civilization, and and this of course has to do also with our own current civilization, but the early rise of civilization is not a random thing. It's, It's not something that happens for no reason. No, it happens because a new wave uh, was was uh, downloadable and it became accessible uh, at a particular point in time. And that, you might say, this new mind uh, transformed the consciousness of, of humanity. It, it altered it. It, it. it changed it for better and for worse, I should say, but, but it certainly did undergo a significant change at this point in time. Would it be fair to say that the every renaissance that we have come across in the history of our cultures on the planet would be an example of a wave hitting human consciousness? I would say so, yes. Um, I, uh, sometimes you, the, the explanations will be a little bit uh, complex, but I would say that it's always... Uh, when a new, uh, there is an ascending phase of, of a peak in the wave, so to speak, that is being activated. That's when there is a renaissance of thinking. And uh, uh, this applies also to later points in time in, in, in human history, closer to our own particular time. But I, I would say so, yes, because the, uh, what happens is that uh, when a new wave is being activated, uh, it influences the human mind and people change their way of thinking, and then there is a renaissance, a renaissance of thinking, a renaissance of creativity, and it, 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 these, these waves uh, affect all aspects. You know, it, it, will ex- it, it affects our ability to create art, music, uh, as well as science and, and technology uh, and so forth. Uh, we, in, in this perspective, we're, we're much more part of an um, intelligent plan than I think most people are, are aware of. How would revolution play in this as well? If we have a renaissance of creativity and, and higher intellect, would it also then stir a sense of revolution or rebellion against the current paradigm that people suddenly feel, you know, inspired to change? Yeah. Uh, uh, certainly, um, you know, it, it's not such a big difference between Renaissance and, and, and a revolution, I would say. Um, uh, and uh, there are periods in time when, when you can see that these kind of shifts have, have uh, generated uh, uh, sweeping, um, sweeping revolutions in, in the world. Um, uh, simply because uh, w- when when people download a new mind, a new type of mind, uh, they, they will look around in the world and, and see that the social system, the political system that that uh, they are part of, is really not consistent with this new uh, mind that they have downloaded, and and that will often uh, result in. Uh, 
in, um, or at, uh, sometimes I should say, sometimes that will uh, result in, in revolutions, uh, people uh, aspiring to have a complete change in, in the way that societies are, are governed and, uh, um, and so forth. Now, when you talk about these downloads, describe for us some symptoms that people might feel when they're experiencing what you call a download. Well, um, that's a question I haven't really, uh, you know, I I, I don't think I can answer that question. Um, I I think we... uh, um, it is like we are transiting into a new way of thinking without really knowing that there is an effect on us from from these waves. Um, the way you see it is, is sort of in on a collective scale, uh, you know, s- uh, suddenly or, or more or less suddenly, uh, whole, whole groups of people are starting to think in new ways and, and there are new paradigms emerging uh, um, uh, and so forth. Uh, but I think most I- I- individuals are not and and it's I I couldn't say that I I mean I I certainly have done a lot of processes of different kinds um, could be spiritual processes and psychological processes and so forth where I you might say that I have experienced that I sort of update my whole uh, consciousness system or or my individual consciousness so to speak but. I, I haven't directly experienced. Uh, well, it has happened. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I need to correct myself <laughs> there. Uh, uh, the, you know, I come to to think of one uh, instance here, which actually is in the foreword of, of my uh, my book, when <clears throat> the the big shift that was in 2011, uh, in uh, when a number of different waves were were changing and so forth that uh, that allowed me <laughs> to to look upon this beginning of civilization in in a, in a new way uh, so so i i think at that point I, yes i was probably aware that my my way of thinking was was changing uh um uh, but mostly, I think these things are so gradual, and uh, and uh, and usually we we are just being part of a new way of thinking that many other people share. That we we don't really see that we are under the effect of these kind of ways for the most part. Uh, that would be my answer, anyway. That's a great answer. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, let's talk about what these waves are. What is the timing of these waves? What, what's the cycle? Talk to us a little bit about how uh, we can measure these waves. And, uh, you know, are we in one now or is one coming? Is there a way to calculate their arrival? Yeah. Yes. So the, the, the 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 Mayan calendar system um, have you might say nine major waves, or it's composed of of nine major waves, and um, that's why uh, they would build pyramids um, that were built in nine levels. Uh, they they saw that each of these waves sort of created a new. Um, frame of consciousness or, or uh, a new kind of reality. And uh, it, it, this was sort of a stepwise uh, process where uh, you start with the first wave that creates one kind of a, uh, approach and one pro, uh, why, uh, way of looking at reality and then on top of that a new one is activated and and then on top of that comes a new one and it sort of is is a, like climbing a pyramid is you might say is the uh, the way that the universe has evolved if you go back from its very birth until the current time but uh, the, uh, the, these waves have different functions, and they uh, uh, play different roles 
and they change the human mind in different kind of ways. And that's why, you know, history, we're not just living in a static world. Instead, we're living in a world that undergoes change. And you might say also that the the speed of the change has increased. And that has to do with the fact that when you climb this pyramid and go up to higher levels that are, are, are developed by higher waves in this uh, calendar system, the, the frequency of the waves will also increase. Actually, they increase 20-fold every time you climb uh, uh, one step. And uh, uh, when, when you're in, uh, resonating with a high-frequency wave, uh, what that means is that uh, change uh, is, is very rapid. And uh, you, you, that is something that many people might have experienced, that, you know, up until the, uh, the, the current time, uh, things have speeded up. Time has speeded up is what we say, but it's really the, the, the amount of change that, uh, that has speeded up in this particular uh, process. And so there's a, a number there, nine different waves, and, and their the frequency uh, r- is widely different. Um, the, the wave that I talked about that started civilization 5,000 years ago approximately, that has a, a, a wave, a full wave period in this, uh, um, uh, wave is uh, almost 800 years, whereas at the top level, the, the highest frequency wave, the, uh, a full wave period is, is as short as 36 days. And uh, uh, this top level wave uh, was activated only as recently as uh, the year 2011. And uh, so it's something that has been active only for a very short period of time. But <clears throat> these different waves, they have played different roles in changing the mentality of, of humanity, and uh, they have different kinds of effects. And uh, yet you can see that it, it, it's, a, it's like a plan that uh, level after level is activated on top of each other and where the lower levels are necessary to prepare humanity for the, the, the higher levels. And um, a very important thing to take note of in this particular system is that we have now, and, and this is only five years ago actually, we ha- the, the highest wave in the system, the ninth wave, the one with the highest frequency, has, or, is now activated. So it's only for five years that all the nine waves have been active, and they're now running in parallel, and it sort of has created a, a, um, a big change in uh, um, in 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 our outlook on 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 life and 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 you certainly see the effects of these uh, the the shift in these different waves when you look around in the uh, in the political changes that goes on in in our on our planet uh, or all in at least in the Western world I I would say that there is, there is an immense change in how people are. Uh, uh, looking upon the, the things, and I, I look upon that as a result of, of shifts in these various waves. Now, as you're describing this, I'm picturing cymatics, where you have sound and vibration uh, yeah. you know, administered to particles or something, in and they form a pattern. So we're actually experiencing layers upon layers of these nine waves happening simultaneously, correct? Yes, yes. And I think cymatics, as you mentioned, is a great analogy for this. Um, you know, if you 
the the lower of these waves actually has to do with with creating the physical bodies of uh, all, all kinds of organisms and uh, including the human beings and uh, you, if you study cymatics you will see that you know the, often the kind of uh, uh, symmetrical structures that uh, these uh, that waves, sound waves, may give rise to, uh, is is reproduced, and in, in the, and and higher organisms like like ourselves, we we are symmetrical structures, and so it, it is quite conceivable that you know these. That's how these uh, waves uh, is is active by by creating our bodies through uh, vibrations. But then, uh, when you come to the higher levels, the higher frequency levels, you, you may still uh, apply this uh, cymatics as as a model for that. But it's not in the same way uh, 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 physical biology rather it is uh, the uh, the the these the, um, these waves are are creating like a a, a cymatic structure of of uh, lines that is uh, organizing our minds uh, so uh, on all levels, you might say that these vibrations or these waves are creating, uh, uh, in, in principle, according to the uh, science of cymatics. Uh, uh, but then you, you climb, you start with the densest levels the, and, and the cellular and, and organismic levels, and then you come up to, to much higher levels that is really mental structures creating the, these waves are, are carrying carriers of, of geometries in, in the way that we can learn from the science of cymatics and uh, then the, these uh, uh, these geometries play a crucial role in, in shaping uh, the human mind it's really interesting that you say that it starts at the denser levels. So when we have these experiences of this, these waves coming through us, would it be fair to say then that our biology would feel it first, that we would have some kind of DNA change perhaps or increase in pain in the human body as we shift? Yeah, I would think so. Uh, um I, I don't know if the mental changes will lead to a, a DNA change, but I would say that the the the, the biological changes that we've undergone uh, certainly then as part of that is the the DNA change. I would say is is a is a result and and a product of of these. Uh, um, waves that that is that we are receiving as 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 organisms. Um, I, I'm not sure if the mental thing um, uh, actually uh, changes our DNA. It's possible. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But it's possible. Well, it's but an certain... interesting thought. <laughs> it's an interesting yes. thought because now, how yes. does this spread out to? Other living life forms, such as nature or animals or water even, are we talking about waves that affect every aspect of molecular structure, or is it just human being, you know, the mind of a human being that gets affected by these? Well, I think uh, the, the way I have understood it is that the, the lower uh, four waves uh, affect uh, many different organisms. Uh, basically, these waves will create all kinds of uh, all, all the plants and, and animals and uh, uh, bacteria and uh, lower level of, of uh, uh, organisms that, that exist on, on our planet. But it seems like, um, and presumably in in, uh, in uh, other planets as well, because um, uh, the, the view that I'm um, uh, forwarding here is that it, uh, it they the, these waves emanate from the center of the universe, meaning that they would be broadcast throughout the universe. But creating life forms maybe in 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 many different locations where the conditions are are suitable, 
uh, for that. But, you know, as I said before, you know, there might be a universal mind, but it, it may express itself quite differently in, because of the local global minds and so forth. But uh, to return to the, uh, to the question that I think the higher waves, they are only downloaded by human beings. Uh, and we are the ones that are carrying what we call a mind, so to speak. Uh, we are the ones that can write and uh, we can we can count and and, and do these kind of things, which uh, most other organisms, at least on our planet, uh, can only do to a very limited extent. So, so the higher waves are like waves, waves whose purpose it is to develop uh, human beings. Hmm. Gives us something to think about. Now, you talk about in your book that in each culture, the origins of civilization can be tied to the arising of one concept in the human mind, and that's straight lines. Could you talk to us a little bit about what you mean by that? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought up the example of cymatics that, you know, that sometimes you can see how uh, waves are, are bringing uh, straight lines in, in, on, on a plate, so to speak, geometric structures organized sometimes uh, in, in four directions or, or like in eight directions. And uh, um, the, 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 the interesting thing in, in this regard is that when you go to what the ancient Maya would talk about as the beginning point of their long count, which again is this particular wave that started 5,130 years ago, um, they describe that as sort of the earth becoming dominated by a grid of uh, uh, lines, straight and perpendicular lines. And uh, they talked about this happening in the, like the, the, the grid was downloaded to the whole earth that uh, uh, created an, what they a partitioning of the earth in eight different energies. But it was straight lines and, and perpendicular lines. And uh, the, the interesting thing then is that that's the description. I mean, this is an ancient description that we know that they left behind. But we, we know that from the same time, uh, people on our planet started to build structures, megaliths, pyramids that actually are straight lines, that embody straight lines. And the, the classical examples may be the Egyptian pyramids, where, um, you know, it, it's built with a precision that m- most people would say we couldn't do it today. Um, and yet it, 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 it has exactly this kind of straight lines, straight directions with an enormous precision going towards the four directions. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, what it looks like is that this, uh, this construction, uh, these pyramids were then really a manifestation of this new uh, a downloaded mind that was dominated or separated, created by the assimilation of these straight and perpendicular lines. And what also is is uh, is amazing is the fact that you know when we talk about a global mind, is that at that particular point in time, which is five thousand years ago plus a little bit more. Uh, it wasn't only the Egyptians that started to build pyramids, but around that time, uh, people started to build pyramids in in several different locations that we now know of. Uh, there are pyramids found in in uh, Peru that are 5,000 years old. There are pyramids built in Mongolia in in East Asia. 
uh, uh, that are about 5,000 years old. There are pyramids built in, in Mesopotamia, in Italy, from about that particular point in time. So uh, it, it looks like, you know, th this is the basis for saying that it must have been a global change in the human mind, because at the same time, people start to, to erect structures uh, based on these straight lines, uh, in in many different parts of the world, um, and uh, the, there is a direct connection, I think, between the the, the straight line and the the very concept of of uh, civilization. Um, you know, I come to think, for instance, of of, of the film movie two thousand one, where you know they come to some other planet, and and the, there is this megalith. And it's, it has is based on straight lines, and that that's something that makes you certain that not only is there life there, but it's some kind of intelligent, civilized mind. That that's really what what straight lines. You know, we we know somewhere that straight lines are crucial to what we call civilization. Uh, it's just that today. You know, uh, we, we're so used to uh, straight lines. We, we don't even think about it anymore. <clears throat> and yet, you know, if you look at it, I'm sitting here in the living room, and, and <clears throat> I can see that the television screen is based on straight lines, and there is a staircase based on straight lines, and the roof is straight, and the house is, has <laughs> perpendicular <laughs> corner, et cetera, et cetera. And this is civilization. <clears throat> and it comes out of a new mind that had downloaded straight lines in in, in this particular way. And so you're but, suggesting that straight lines actually come from a, uh, as a product of the download from one of these combination of waves at that particular yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. That's when it begins. And then, of course, we, you know, today we, we also have a, a tremendous amount of, of straight lines in, in everywhere where, where humans are or civilized humans are. Well, it also begs the question, the global pyramid culture that started to build all of these around the globe, were they in fact aware of this wave phenomena and did they do it as kind of a tuning fork for the planet to resonate with these waves? Well, um, maybe so. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think they were very aware that a new mind, that a new world was was coming in from from the outside, so to speak, and you know there there are in in those days what we can gather from their inscriptions is that they looked upon civilization as some kind of a gift from the gods. Uh, Different gods in different uh, cultures, uh, but, but uh, th that seems to have been a common theme. And overall, I think they were quite excited also about this uh, civilized life that opened up to to them. You know, we, we, it took a couple of hundred years, but it's still a fairly short time period when people. Got completely new capabilities, and 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 uh, you know it's, it's somewhat like the digital revolution that that ca came in our own lifetime and and started with the eighth wave, another of these particular waves. But in those days, they they uh, did, and I think they wanted to reproduce this mind, this global mind that they had downloaded, and that that was a major reason that they built pyramids in order to reproduce this global mind that they were sensing was now accessible to them. And, but, but to what extent that then also served to tune into, um, I mean, it might, to actually participate in the building of these pyramids might even have developed their uh, resonance with this new wave and, and made them more civilized which is probably what they at that time really wanted 
to do because that was sort of the incoming new thing that was uh, in vogue at the time. Um, and uh, uh, but I don't really know if it served more if if they wanted to also use the pyramid for for some other, uh, as you said tuning for uh, purpose or, or something like that. I I cannot tell, but it's possible. Hmm. Now, you mentioned the digital world. You know, we've been in the uh, nine waves for five years, so that you, yeah. you, as you said. Now, the digital res- renaissance that's come out of that has created, in what some people term, a digital mind. So is it possible that yeah. we have become more of a computer-like mind based on our digital renaissance, but could it be also that it's like a, another renaissance of the mind where we're supposed to be more, um, I don't know, it just seems like the digital mind has a, a great reach and there's ways to experience expand yep. and download, and, and a lot of the terms are similar to what you've been speaking of. How do you see the digital resin, the resin, um, excuse me, renaissance yeah. that's happened as an yeah. example of a digital mind expansion? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I would not, I would not associate it with the ninth wave that started in 2011. I would is associated with another wave, the eighth wave that started in 1999, and that's really when when you, you, smart technologies are starting and and the, an interactive uh, internet is is emerging. And uh, why? Um, uh, to, to begin with, uh, what that means is that a new wave uh, became downloadable at that point in time, and as this new wave became downloadable, then uh, uh, people also started to think in new terms and and develop a new kind of, of creativity, and a, a creativity that was based on everything that we experience to make it digital, so to speak, and, and from that digital digitalization of reality, then uh, uh, all kinds of things that seemed like magic uh, came to uh, emerge. Um, but um, it's um, uh, how did this happen? Well, uh, it has again to do, you know, if you look, if you envision the human mind as being dominated by straight lines, and in particular then one line that separates the left and the right brain half, like, like a, a, a plane or a line that sort of uh, goes through our, our, our head and separates the two of them. Um, then the result of that is that uh, the, the mind is basically becoming binary. And you might say that the, uh, one of the uh, uh, brain halves will be you can uh, you can uh, associate with the number one, and the other brain half you can associate with the zero. And that's really the, the that's the basis of, of digitalization with a binary code and so forth. And so you may understand from this uh, way of, of looking at it that. What happened at that when that way was activated was that a new mind was uh, 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 um, downloaded that helped people digitalize reality, and once that mental transformation uh, had occurred, uh, the people started to digitalize everything, and from that we we have developed all the kind of smart technology that, that we we see in the world today, it, it, actually in a very short period of time. And it has to do with the fact that this is a very high-frequency wave com- compared to the much slower change that people experience when, when, uh, um, when the pyramids started to be built. But I think it's very relevant to see that these are two different waves, and they have different frequency, meaning that they will develop things with different speeds. But it's still, you know, the, the pyramidal revolution is in principle just the same as the digital 
revolution. And they both come out of the fact of human beings downloading new uh, uh, lines and, and uh, uh, structuring reality in, in, in a new way. Um, uh, I think it's harder for people to see the connection of a mental change leading to the digital revolution because somehow it looks like something happening outside of ourselves, it's sort of just magic that drops upon us, uh, uh, something like that. But, I, you know, when you, when you see that it comes out of a change in mind that, that created a new binary structure of, of the human mind, you can start to see that, well, a direct result of that would, would have become this digitalization and, and the millions of applications that, that that has had on the Internet and, and elsewhere in, in, in this short period of time. So is it fair to say, then, that this past ninth wave uh, infusion that only happened a short period ago is still going to show we're just kind of in that baby stage? You know, it's just yeah. starting to affect us, and we may not see the full effect for quite some time then. That's, that's exactly true. And especially in the beginning of waves, you, you I mean, it takes time for people to to try them out, so to speak, and, and, and it takes time until people become fully immersed in, in these waves. And then uh, there's also, at the current time, it's a little bit like a competition between the different waves as to the, what kind of effects they will have, who, what waves will, will, will dominate humanity how, that, that that's that's one thing but especially when it comes to this uh, ninth wave which is really then the the highest frequency wave um, it, it's only been you know the, the people that were born into this wave they they are less than five years old and what that means is that even if they may be um, very gifted and smart and so forth, uh, usually five years old uh, do not play a role in shaping uh, uh, society uh, at large. And so I think there is an effect here. There has been a new wave that has been activated that actually promises a, a lot of positive changes for humanity, uh, that, that promises the, the possibility of, 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 of peace and, and harmony uh, because it's not a dualistic uh, uh, wave, uh, but it, it's still uh, the, the the shapers of society uh, is is much more than a, five years old, and and so uh, we we are sensing it. We are seeing some reflections of, of this change uh, towards a, a golden age uh, that I believe is is really the purpose of of the this cosmic plan to create, but. It's, it's far from from dominant yet. It's far from dominant, and we are at a very uh, um, transition point where all kinds of uh, effects are coming in. Where some people are trying to hold on to uh, the dualistic uh, mindset of, of lower waves, whereas others are more into experiencing the the, the higher waves uh, and 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 seeing uh, we, which actually do provide a, a path towards uh, towards unity and. Uh, uh, towards uh, decreasing conflicts and, uh, and so forth. But it, it is yet some time to come uh, uh, until it, it, it fully manifests. Uh, that there's a lot of change that people need to go through uh, in order to come to that point, in order to cl climb to the highest uh, level of the nine-story pyramid, if you like, and uh, um, uh, it's yes, it's a lot of change that people need to do, and people also need to to have the intention of, of changing their their ways of being uh, accordingly with, with that. Hmm. I'm curious. 
curious how synchronicity, psychic abilities, and intuition change during these waves. Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think, um, for one thing, in, in this kind of model, we are downloading, uh, even though this is not what we taught in schools or in the official scientific uh, studies or, or, or anything like that, but in this model, we are downloading like the same programs for our mind. And uh, uh, that is a, a, a basis, uh, or maybe the fundamental basis for this phenomenon that you mentioned, uh, which is called synchronicities. Uh, and what that uh, phenomenon is, is what uh, the Swiss uh, psychologist Carl Jung would uh, uh, call these uh, amazing synchron uh, events that that sometimes happen to you and and seem meaningful when uh, you know you go to some faraway country and you meet your next door neighbor or uh, um, you you suddenly you meet uh, uh, three persons in a row that have the same uh, name or, or all all these kind of things that they they seem uh, miraculous often and and many people will use them for guidance because because of this reason because they seem inexplicable in in, in some kind of sense but um, they're only in, inexplicable from the traditional materialist world view that dominates still dominates our our society and dominates our educational system and media and so forth. Uh, if, you, if you change your viewpoint and if you recognize that uh, we are all part of the same global mind, we're downloading it, then you have taken the first step to understanding that these kind of synchronicities are not so uh, strange uh, at all. Uh, um, and uh, it, it just has to do with the, what, what kind of uh, uh, intentions we have and, well, what kind of beings we are, and, and that will sort of give the more concrete uh, content of, of the synchronicities and determine what it is. But the very fact that we are, uh, our, our minds are all connected through this global mind is a way of understanding why, why we do experience these kind of things. And uh, especially when there are changes in, in, these, uh, um, in, in these wave structures so in, in, that, that in the, the whole humanity, uh, uh, that, that are accessible to all of humanity, it means that when there is some kind of a change in, in, the, in the waves, it means that several people, uh, many people will, will take a new direction. And, and as that happens, that people will be aware of a, a number of events that are aligned with this new direction that is given by the change in the mind. And that that those uh, those phenomena is what what I, I say that that uh, would be uh, synchronicities, amazing things happening at the same time, uh, because what what we call time when we talk about synchronicities is. Uh, it, it, it's sort of a higher level of time. It's, it's more like timing. Uh, it's, it's, it is time for something to happen. And why is it time for something to happen? Well, because it's a certain wave that is influencing people at, at that particular point in time. Absolutely fascinating. So we have this momentum that's building, really. And I guess my next question, I know we're coming to the end of the show, and I wish we had another hour to talk. Um, why nine? Why only nine waves? Are we not going to experience another emanation from the center of the universe? And is that something that was determined based on your theory and research into the Mayan calendar? Well, uh, 
you know, the number nine is, is uh, to begin with, it's not just Mayan. Uh, if you go to uh, Asia, um, to East Asia, you will find there's a number of pagodas that are built in, in nine levels there, too. And uh, if, if you go to numerology and, and listen to a different kind of um, spiritual traditions, uh, they will chipple refer to the number nine as a number of completion. And, you know, the, the system that we're using, the numerical system, is, is based on, on the uh, decimal system. In other words, when, when you come to the number nine, you start anew. <laughs> in, in, we don't go, you know, the, the single digits do not go higher than nine, because that is a, a, a number of, of completion. And that, you know, is that true or is it not true? Well, I cannot provide any definite proof of this. I can only point to the fact that there are so many different cultures in so many different parts of the world that give that kind of a quality to the number nine. And so it makes sense to me that the Maya would uh, you know uh, that they, it is the highest level of, of, of this system um, I don't think uh, um, that means that we, that we are running out of um, change so to speak I think um, you know even after a, a hard time we, and we go through to a golden age even that will not be static uh, these waves will continue to create changes, um, maybe, f but within a different framework, and uh, which will allow us to deepen ourselves. The ninth wave brings a unity. It means it, unity with all that is, and mm. that, that means I also, as I see it, that it, you know it will allow for us to continue to. Uh, deepen our, 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 our um, what shall I say, uh, our experience of, 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 of the universe, uh, even though there isn't a tenth wave. That's hmm, our interesting. Look. Well, this has been extraordinarily interesting and fascinating for so many reasons. We are out of time, and thank you so much yeah. for being here. Anybody listening, if you'd like to buy the book, The Global Mind and the Rise of Civilization, The Quantum Evolution of Consciousness, you can go to com and you can purchase the book. It's out from Baron Company, available now. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing with us, Dr. Coleman. Thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you very everybody, much. Everybody, everybody have a wonderful evening.